In order to illustrate the advantages of TQ, I'm going to show how TQ can be used to improve the performance of compression drivers and horns, how it allows us to achieve directional consistency, especially in coaxial devices, and also how it allows us to achieve the uh, consistency in voicing from product to product that, we, that we're looking for. Uh, to start out with a compression driver, I'll just explain the basic function of a compression driver. What you have is a, is a fairly large dome that squeezes its output through a much smaller hole. And that's where the term compression comes from. But when you do that, you can see that the dome would have a cavity of air inside it. And that cavity of air is essentially a low pass filter that would not allow the high frequencies to get into the throat of the horn. So to counteract that effect, you have a phase plug, which is what you see here, and it has concentric rings that are the paths for, this, for the sound to, to get from the diaphragm to the horn throat. Now, theoretically, the idea is that sound originating at any point on the dome will go into the first slot, but not all of it does. Some of it goes beyond the slot and goes into the next slot and continues on like that. So the result of that is that you have a impulse response from a compression driver that is not just a pure impulse, there are a number of arrivals that come in smeared in time over a millisecond or two. Now with TQ, we can change that impulse response back to a pure impulse using a specialized FIR filter, and that restores the clarity and the transient crispness at the top end, so that instead of sounding splashy like a normal compression driver, it sounds more like a dome tweeter, but gets very loud. There's no loss of efficiency in the compression driver from this technique. So now we've got the output from the compression driver into the throat of the horn. The next component in the chain, of course, is the horn. Uh, there are competing requirements to make a good horn. You would like it to sound good on axis. Uh, you would like it to be well behaved directionally. And in our case, we quite often want it to behave itself in a coaxial configuration. Those three things are often at odds. And the reason is because to make a directional horn, you have to have abrupt transitions in the shape of the horn. And those transitions create reflections that are returned to the compression driver, uh, partially absorbed, partially re-emitted. And that happens over and over again. So you have, once again, a smeared transient response, which we can correct with an FIR filter. So by doing that, we can correct the reflective characteristic of the horn, still preserve the directional control and the shape that, that happens to work well in a coax. The next thing I want to address is how we can use TQ to optimize the directional response and uh, performance of uh, specifically coaxial drivers. If you try to create a passive crossover that produces a flat response, it's, it's a very difficult thing to do. And it's, very, it's even more difficult to do that and have consistent directional response. So knowing that we have DSP available, we can release ourselves of the requirement of making it inherently flat. That allows us to leave the efficiency very high, which reduces amplifier voltage swing. And it allows us to uh, design the crossover only to have parallel lines as we're moving off axis. The, the off-axis response is parallel. And as a result, once you equalize that flat, now you have both flat and parallel lines moving off axis. Um, the other thing about that approach is that the crossovers are much simpler, and they have no resistors in them in most cases. And because of that, there is a lot less variability in the response shape, because any crossover component has a, has a tolerance range. Those things accumulate in complex crossovers, but in a very simple crossover, they're very consistent. That allows us to achieve the last goal, which is tonal consistency. So between the idea that we have crossovers that don't change response with level and that are consistent from unit to unit, combined with the idea that we can tweak the, uh, the DSP settings to our heart's desire, it allows us to, to make products that sound very similar to one another, much more similar than you can achieve with the traditional method. 
So the applications of TQ that I've just gone over in a little bit of detail is just a small sampling of the things that we can do with it. Uh, it also allows us to have multiple coax horn patterns, which is a very unique thing in the, in the market today. It allows us to employ folded horns in the vocal range, which allows the AH series to both sound very clear and intelligible in the vocal range and be extended to below 80 hertz in frequency response. It allows us to use innovative acoustical configurations as we do in the FL283 line array, but most importantly, it greatly improves the transient response and clarity of every product in the line. Now the filters that achieve that are, have been, I've mentioned them several times, the FIR filters. If you want to understand how an FIR filter actually accomplishes all these wonderful things, then uh, pick up the next video.